Hello all, welcome to orotrainings.com. In this session, we'll discuss about the build standard or naming convention while designing BIP reports, okay? So what are the components we have in BIP? So when you're, as a technical developer or a developer, when you're creating any component as part of BIP, we have to understand what is the naming we have to follow. What is the name we have to give for it, right? So generally, on a high level, the components which you come across in the BIPR, the first thing is the folder or folder structure. The next one is the data model. Inside a data model, you may have a query, you may have a parameter, you may have a LOV, you may have a flexi field, right? You may have a busting query, etc. And other thing is a report. So report will have a report name as well as layout file name. Okay. Now let's start with the folder structure. So what is the structure we have to follow, first of all, right? That is a quite very important question or uh, a meaningful name should be given so that, you know, like uh, when you're maintaining the code, it becomes very easy for you to understand and maintain it, right? So generally what you can try to do is like, as per the example, you can just mention your particular client or a customer name, most preferably short name, followed by the module or a track name. Now let us say, Assume my company name is Aura Trainings. So I prefer OT, the shortcut, I mean, the short name for my Aura Trainings is OT, then followed by reports. Let us say, if you want to consider, let us say if you want, you're, if it's a bigger organization and you want to consider based on a track. So then you, what you can do, you can mention OT, OT trainings, uh, sorry, OT integrations, OT financials, OT supply chain, or OT SCM, or OT EPM or let us say if you have different companies, right? Then what you can do, you can mention like a OT company one, OT company two, OT company three, like that you can mention, okay? So the first thing you have to start with is a, what is a folder structure you want to follow, okay? So here I mentioned the example, like you can have a client and customer name followed by the module name or a domain name or a stream name you can consider. Next one is what are the subfolder you can have it, right? Now let us say we have considered integration or reports right let us say in the in the reports so what all we can have it we can have a generally what we can we can subdivide into according to the module or a business process or a departments right most probably like you'll have epm financials hcm pr procurement supply chain projects crm right better to have a shortcut i mean better you, you mention the short name don't try to totally abbreviate it just have a shortcut Next one is a data model, right? So before going further, what I can do is you can just try to create the same thing in the instance, right? So now I'm in my XMLP server, right? So here, the first thing what you can do is, what are the custom code which you generally create, right? They should be in shared folders. Maybe during design time, during design time, let us say if it is not sent to the customer or to the business team for the validation, you can have them in the my folders. But if at all, if you want to share to the share to your team, like uh, the business users, preferably, or it should be, I can say, it should be in shared folders only, they, then only they can access it. So first thing, let us start like a new folder. Assume that my company name is Tata Motors. Okay, assume that my company name is Tata Motors. So I'll just say Tata Motors like this, or I can say TM, right? Right, so the folder got created. It may not be visible by default. So just refresh it here so that we can see that. Right, Tata Motors. Now, now this is my client name or a customer name, right? So why why like why are you having a customer name? Let us say this belongs to a single customer name. Why do you want this one? The basic reason is let us say a client, if at all, if they are having a different different entities, right? So then you can do you can have it like a Tata Motors for other one, like let us say big basket, other one is one MG, you can have different folders like that. But basically the first preferable one is a client name, then followed by let us say track. Let us say, I'll say integrations, IND, right? Now let us say, I'll say EPM. Next ERP, right? Like this. Now, let us say if I want to have subdivision fuel for more, furthermore, I'll just click on ERP. And then inside this ERP, what I'll do, I'll say supply chain. I prefer SCM, right? So you can follow a folder structure like this, right? Tata Motors, ERP, supply chain, and then supply chain, you'll have a supply chain reports, okay? Now, what is the, first, what is the next component we prefer now? data model so in the data model what all you have you may have a data set parameters list of values busting query and flexible let's start with the data set data set is nothing but the what is a query you mentioned there right so 
preferably the data set name we can have it as like you know you can have a client name or in a short name like a tm followed by the purpose what is the data you are trying to try what is the query you are right, trying to write and what is what it is doing i mean to say let us say you are extracting pivo information pivo header information you can mention pivo header queue with the line information you can mention p1 underscore lines underscore q better preferably just follow the uppercase for all your data query, data set queries okay so that it is clearly visible right now we can just start the same thing now i'll say new data model so let us say i want to get party information so i'll just say sql query right ot party info underscore q nothing but q means query select start from heads at parties okay this is how we can mention now once it is done data set is done next thing is a parameter so parameters preferably it has to be a pascal case like you can mention like a starting with p underscore followed by the parameter number appropriate name for your parameter let us say if it is party number you can mention party p underscore uh, party underscore num if it is a name you can just p underscore party name let us say we'll try to write that parameters click on plus symbol you can say p underscore party underscore name not much not too short not too big okay just you have to decide that now you can just mention this party name okay next thing is the list of values list of values again you know like uh, follow the same convention like uh, there is you don't require to uh, prefix with p but you can have appropriate name based on the data which you want to fetch let us say if i want if i'm fetching the party name hello party names i can just prefer party underscore name underscore lov right okay that's how we can try to give it now coming to the next one data model what is the data model you want to save it right so data model you know like a generally in the project most of the times the client provides a list of reports to be designed and also generally they mention the object id for it right so if at all if you have an object id mention your client name followed by the object id followed by your particular purpose of the report let us say if it is a po extraction report you can mention p underscore extract underscore underscore dm if it is supplier extract you can mention supplier details underscore dm so now in our case let us say it is party details customer details or party details dm so what i do is right so i'll just say ot or maybe tm party details underscore dm you can preferably you can mention description also it will have more in more clarity party details extract for supply chain modules for acm right so saved it i'll go back to just see how it looks like Can you see if you have a proper description it becomes very easy to understand other thing is when you're creating data model preferably this data model should be inside inside data model folder nothing but now let us say i have scm in that scm i'm expecting the reports of scm should be there but now data model generally what what is preferable is like i'll just create a folder called data model okay like this and i'll copy this or cut i can say cut and i'll just go inside here and paste okay so when you create data models generally having them in the data model folder okay that is another naming convention you have to follow okay now let's go back next thing is a report so report will have two things one is report name other one is a template name so report name it should be a very meaningful name so that the business user can easily understand okay now in this case if you observe the example client name followed by space followed by the object name right like a client name is in our case it's tm and then followed by the appropriate description of your report now let us say we have designed a party report right so i'll just click on your report So let us select the data model.
Okay, now just save it. So here I'll say TM party details report and you can mention some description to you easily understand. What you can do, let us say, same thing, TM party details report, SCM, and you can mention some object ID, let us say, RAP underscore 001 or something like that you can mention to distinguish if at all there is a dis if there is a you know like a, to easily identify by IDs if at all if you prefer that this is a report name right now as of now what we do we'll just try to just generate the template name so now let us see what is the naming convention we prefer for the template name okay so for template name what we have to do is don't try to mention the total full name okay so what you can do is now the report name, like uh, as of now, the the layout name should be very simple. So in this case, nothing but either you mention output, data, details, extract, or whatever it is. You can mention either extract, you can mention data, output, details, like that. So why? Because what are the template name which you mention that will get appended to your report name? Okay. So that's why what I prefer to do is let us say. I'll say extract. Okay, so I'll just mention click on generate. You'll understand once we generate the report, we'll clearly understand what is the reason why I mentioned extract here. Okay, let's save it. Okay, so I'll just click on view report. Okay, preferable it should have been parameterized because else it will provide you larger data, right? So what I'll do is let us say I'll just open another window. I prefer cancel this one because it will extract all the data which is available, all party information, right? So just change it right away. For now, I'll just mention where no num less than 10 so that it will get nine records. And just refresh. Of course, it is not good because we gen we considered all the columns, right? Which is not a good practice, but fine. So next thing you can try to do is like uh, click on this one, export PDF. Can you see the name? TM party details, right? TM party details is a name. TM party details report underscore extract. Whatever the name which you mentioned for our template name, that will be appended with underscore. Now let's try one more thing. I'll show you. Let's say I'll create one more template. Okay. So what we can do is we can just change our query so that it will not generate all the columns. I'll say party underscore ID, party underscore number. So we don't require all columns to be generated. Now I'll open, I'll click on edit report. Add new layout. Okay, you require a sample data, right? Save as sample data. Again, save it. Now try again, add new layout. Now click on generate. Let's say earlier we mentioned extract. Now this time I'll mention output. Click on generate. Save it. Let us say I want this default one. This output should be my default. So I'll select this one. Click on save. Click on view report. Now this output is my latest report, which is a default one. And then I'll try to generate PDF. And you can, sorry, you can export. I mean to say, not generation, export. Now, can you see? TM party details report underscore output. But where is this TM party details coming from? That is your report name. This is a report name. Okay, so the template name will get appended to your report name. Okay, so these are the some of the building standard you can follow while designing BI report. Okay, that's all. Thank you.